By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a very funny game. At least I think it's a very funny game because I'm playing with one of my new decks, Sleeping Beauty, and I'm playing against my patron, Keith Morgan. And Keith is bringing an Underworld Dreams deck to the table. It is um, it is pretty classic with some interesting choices. It's red and it's black, so that's pretty classic. And there are some tweaks in there that might be interesting to look at. I've got deck photos of both of the decks playing today, so stick around for the deck decks. It's pretty interesting. But if you want to go directly to the match, you can do that as well. Like always, check the description below. There you will find a timestamp that's called MTG Games. Click on the timestamp and it will take you directly to the action, directly to the matches themselves. Here we are going to continue with the deck tech. And I'm going to start by taking a look at the Underworld Dreams deck of my opponent today, Keith. Let's go. And here we see the deck of my opponent. Um, let's take a look here, Keith. And like I said, it's a kind of an Underworld dr Dreams deck. It's red and it's black. And then you probably already have a list in your mind. But as you can see, uh, Keith has made some different choices. And it's always interesting to see that. I think this is very much a deck in the making. Uh, there are some really strong cards in here. You've got an, a playset of Hypnotic Specters with, of course, the Dark Ritual. That's always a good combination when you can get a turn one. Of course, there's always the fear that your opponent might respond with a, a, a Lightning Bolt or a Swords to Plow Steers, and then it's simply a two for one, right? So against you, so that's not very good. But if you can manage to get the Hippie out turn one and it sticks, then you definitely have the advantage. And then we also see a play set of Juggernaut. So that's kind of the weapon of choice here for the four drop. He's also playing four set trolls, but they're in the sideboard. So that's an interesting choice here because he also plays two Nevenerals discs main. So you might consider changing that. On the other hand, he's probably looking at his mana base as well. Like you have to understand, um, uh, Keith is a starting player still in old school, so he doesn't have access to all the cards. So he really plays with what he has, which is something I like. Um, so he's got two City of Brasses and not four, I believe. So if he can strengthen his mana base a little bit, you know, he can find maybe space to play the Setch Troll main, or maybe he just wants to do something else, or he really likes Juggernaut. Juggernaut is a really cool, it's one of the coolest creatures in old school. N not one of the best, but it's one of the coolest creatures. And hey, for four mana, you've got five power. And I mean, I think, Keith, I don't want to spoil my deck yet, but against my deck, those Juggernauts are, <laughs> they're really powerhouses. Anyway, uh, we've looked at the creatures. Let's look at the rest of the deck. Uh, like I said before, there are Underworld Dreams in here, three in total. That works, of course, really well with Wheel of Fortune and the Winds of Change. They're both in this deck. I also like this classical combo, Black Fies, Wheel of Fortune. If he then also has um, a, a, um, Underworld Dreams on the table, that means he can deal like 10 damage in one go in combination with the color red that always has that direct damage option. It's just a lot of action here, you know? It's a lot of damage, and I think you can lose against his deck actually quite quickly. Also playing with um, four Mishra's Factories. It's almost kind of an auto-include for, for many players. I have to say there are certain decks where Mishra's Factory is actually not that great, and I would advise everybody to try to test with and without four Mishra's Factories. Also try to play with two Factories or three Factories. Don't just always auto-include those four factories give some time in test playing and see if it really fits. Um, in this deck, I can I can kind of see it work. You know, um, he doesn't play with a lot of creatures, so it's good to have those four there. He also plays with Navnero's disc, and of course the um, Mitra's factories when their lands are not affected by the disc. So that's some nice little synergy there as well. Okay, so this is the deck of my opponent, um, and there's a lonely sinkhole in there. I mean, look at that. <laughs> it's one sinkhole. I do think it's. I do think it's good. I think I would play with maybe two or even three single. Of course, it depends on your strategy. Um, I always want to make sure when I make a Swedish deck, you're probably going to laugh when you see my deck because I have like zero land removal, I believe. But um, when I try to make uh, a deck for Swedish, I always try to think I want to have four ways to get rid of a land. So in this in this deck, you see a strip mine, that's one. You see a chaos orb, that's one. I just count that. And there's a single. So those it actually has three ways to get rid of a crucial land if he needs to. Against me, he, he doesn't have to, but let's say against another deck, uh, it can be very crucial. You know, if you if you have a Veloa or you have a Mace that's that's kind of in your way or one of those annoying factories, 
So my advice is always try to reserve four spots for land removal, including the strip mine and the chaos orb. So then you only have like two spots left where you can kind of get creative. But that's that's my advice. Yeah, feel free, of course, to do your own thing. As a matter of fact, do your own thing. Um, this is the deck. A little peek at the sideboard. I'm really happy only plays with one gloom because I'm playing with white today. So I'm happy there's only one gloom in there. So this is the deck of Keith. Now let's take a look at my brew, Sleeping Beauty. And this is my deck. I've called my deck Sleeping Beauty, and this is really what I like to call a top-down design, or you could also call it a theme deck. So top-down design means that you start building a deck with an idea in your head. You don't think about a certain mechanic or card. You just think, it wouldn't it be cool to... And then it starts. Homelands, for example, was also a top-down design, and we know uh, <laughs> how, how well that set worked. Although I really, I love that set. I really like that set. There's some cool cards in there, and cards with cool stories. But let's, okay, I'm not gonna talk about Homelands. I'm gonna try to stay focused on my deck. So this is a top-down design. And my top-down design kind of started when I saw this picture, this picture of Sleeping Beauty, and she's holding this rose. So I immediately thought of Rejuvenate Enchantress, and then I started to think, okay, let's let's think, what was that fairy tale about? Now, what happens is an evil, um, an, an, an evil fairy, actually, uh, curses a princess that is Sleeping Beauty, um, and she's locked up in a castle, and then she summons, and this is literally in the fairy tale, this word summons, so it's very magic-y, she summons a forest of trees, brambles, and thorns that spring up around the castle, shielding it from the outside world and preventing anyone from disturbing the princess, right? So obviously, when I read this, I'm like, wait a minute, I need to add these walls. So I added Wall of Brambles, I added Carnivorous Plants, which is really like, I can see that evil fairy kind of summoning that. And then I thought, but there's also the prince and the prince that's going to save the princess. So the prince in this case is the Akron Legionnaire. So it's an 8-4 creature who's holding this big sword, right? So I thought, well, he wants to enter the castle. So probably after getting through all the bushes, He's going to have to get through the Wall of Brambles. I mean, he's, he's going to have to get through the defenses of the castle itself. So then I thought, hey, let's add Wall of Swords. And also, I kind of needed Wall of Swords because as you can see, this is turning out to be a wall deck and Wall of Swords is one of the best, maybe the best wall in old school magic. So I just had to add that. And then when I added all these walls, I thought, well, Fortified Area, that's a really cool card. So basically what I've tried to do with this deck, uh, I started with the top-down design, right? I wanted to tell the story about Sleeping Beauty, um, but I also want the deck to kind of work. So I, I always try then to make a deck that has and the flavor and the story, but also works. And you're probably thinking, really does this work? Well, bear with me here, it's actually it's not that bad and I've tested it a few times and I lost most of the games, but I think it has potential. What I want to put in here, by the way, is a regrowth. So if you're watching this and you have an idea, what card would you take out for a regrowth? Let me know in the comments below. Basically what I want to do with this deck is I have a bunch of walls, right? That I can play. Fragurn Enchantress is a key part of my deck. I play with 15 enchantments in total and um, Fragurn Enchant Enchantress is my drawing engine. So I'm hoping that Fragurn Enchantress gets on the board in turn two or turn three. You know, I'm playing with a full play set and then I can start drawing cards, casting my enchantments, hopefully a Sylvan Library early. If my opponent starts aggressively, I'm gonna start playing Spirit Link so that they don't die. I get to draw even more cards. Then I'm gonna draw into my walls. My walls are not that expensive, you know. Uh, Wall of Brambles is two, three, one green, regenerate for three. That's a pretty good deal. So I can I can have that on the board pretty quickly. Uh, Wall of Swords is one white and three for a three, five flyer that can block most of the things. So again, uh, I can do great work with that as well. I've got Carnivorous Plant, which is a 4-5 from the dark. I think it's the strongest wall power-wise in old school. Let me know in the comments below. I think I'm right. Like, 4 power is huge for wall. Now, I've got all these walls, and then obviously I have to play with Animate Wall, which is actually an enchant wall. Isn't that funny? It's not an enchant creature. It's not an aura. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, an, it's an enchant wall. You can only play it on walls. Like, if I have this in my hand and I have an enchantress in play but I don't have a wall to cast it on, I actually can't just cast it on my Enchantress because she's not a wall, so I cannot just cast it to draw a card. It's not that good. 
it's actually pretty mediocre, but the art is epic. And the cool thing is in this deck, I can play an animate wall on my carnivore, uh, carnivorous plant or on my wall of swords and I can start attacking, right? And then I've got my uh, fortified area that's actually giving my walls plus one plus O. Oh. So for example, my carnivorous plant will turn into a five five that can attack with the animate wall, add a spirit link and I even get life. Now that is one road to victory animating my walls, stamping over my opponent. But, you know, usually opponents play with removal, right? So I'm assuming maybe I can get six, seven damage in with the wall. That would be great if, that, if I can succeed with that. Um, and then my wall will get killed. So one of the things that I need to do here is find an alternative way to win besides this wall combat damage plan. That's where this card Sword of the Ages comes in. Sword of the Ages is an artifact from Legends. I've got the Italian edition in my deck. Uh, it's six to cast, it comes into play tapped. When it untaps, I can tap it and I can sack it and I can sack an X amount of creatures that I have. So an X amount of walls and maybe also my Akron Legionnaire if it hits the table in time because it's eight mana to cast, that's ridiculous. But if I manage to cast it though, um, and then I sack, let's say the Akron Legionnaire and a Wall of Swords. Akron Legionnaire has eight power, Wall of Swords has three power. So together that's 11 power, so I can deal 11 damage with my uh, Sword of the Ages to any target. So that can go to a creature, but it can also go to my opponent. So his life total. So I've got two ways to win here. I can win with Animate Wall attacking walls, or I can win with my Sword of the Ages blowing up my Sword of the Ages and dealing enough damage to my opponent directly by sacking enough creatures and getting enough power together to kill my opponent, right? So these are kind of my two strategies. I'll probably need a combination to win the game. An an another way that I could, in theory, win is, of course, with my Akron Legionnaire. So Akron Legionnaire is a card from Legends. This is the Chronicle Edition that you see in my deck. I just think it's an epic creature. It's eight power. It's huge. I think it's the biggest creature power-wise in the color white of old school magic. It's like gigantic. And it's two white and six to cast. And uh, when Akron Legionnaire is in play, only Akron Legionnaire can attack. Uh, yeah, like your only Akron Legionnaire and artifact creatures can attack. That's it. So non artifact creatures cannot attack. That's important, right? It doesn't matter that much for me because I'm playing with a bunch of walls anyway. So I'm not expecting to attack much. So um, here you go. Here you see my deck. I'm excited. Um, I, I'm not sure if it, if if it's if it's gonna gonna do much. I think the card that that I fear the most here is uh, Juggernaut. Juggernaut is my fear. I think after boarding, I can board in some extra artifact removal and some uh, Circle of Protections, Red and Black. I think my game two, I stand a better chance. But who knows? We'll just, we'll just have to wait and see. So, so these are my cards. Uh, again, I'm still wanting to put a regrowth in this deck. If you have an idea what to take out, let me know in the comments below. Um, and let me know what you like about these top-down design decks, because I really enjoy making them, and I, I think I'm gonna make some more. And once again, my goal of these decks is I want them to, to look good, to tell a story, but also I want them to work. Like they don't have to be a tier one deck. That's not gonna happen, but I want them to work on like a tier three or a tier four level, right? That's what I would really appreciate. Okay, so these are the cards. Let's go to the games. Game number one and let's go. And I've got Keith sitting on the left. I'm sitting on the right, of course, with the Timmy playmat. And let's see how this will turn out. So we've got Underworld Dreams, red and black, versus my Sleeping Beauty deck, white and green. And there's a Wild Grove turn one for me. That's pretty good. And there's the attack. Oh, actually not an attack playing uh, Felwerstone there. I just assumed he would attack with the 2-2, but Felwerstone, of course, giving some ramp. That's pretty good. Playing a Wall of Brambles, 2-3 Wall with Regeneration for one green. But I don't have any green open at the moment, so maybe there will be, yeah, there's a Chain Lightning on the wall of brambles and an attack here for two. So I'm gonna drop to 18 and playing a new wall. This time it's a wall of swords. So at least wall of swords is a little bit more difficult for Keith to get rid of. Let's see what he can do here. He's got four mana already. 
And playing land number five, will we see? Oh, there's a Nevenerals disc. Not too concerning for me yet. Play a Savannah and pass turn here. So this is a little bit difficult here for, for Keith, of course, thinking, am I really going to just use a disc for one wall? That's probably not the best option for him. So he's casting a strip mine. Probably, oh, I, I wanted to say he's probably going to strip. Oh, this is a problem, Juggernaut. I wanted to say he's probably going to strip the Wild Grove land, but this Juggernaut is a huge problem. Remember, it cannot be blocked by walls. And now I'm playing an animate, animate wall over my wall of sorts, which is pretty funny, but it's not going to help me play a plant 4-5 wall from the dark so that at least can block the Mistress Factory but remember I cannot block the Juggernaut so I'm gonna get 5 damage here and this is a problem for me and it looks like he's casting something that we can't see yet okay there's a Chaos Orb so things are looking pretty good here for my opponent and he's going to flip and that is a hit so my Plant is a goner. My wall is done for. He's going to attack for 7. I'm going to drop to 11. And that was a pretty nice flip, uh, by the way. Keith, well done. And there is a new plant to block. And I'm just going to attack again. What I really need here is a disenchant or at least a spirit link for the juggernaut. So I'm playing two disenchants main and I'm playing a dust to dust. Dust to dust would be quite nice. I can take out his Juggernaut and his Nevenerals Disc. And there we see the Strip Mine activation on the Wild Grove land. That makes absolute sense. It's probably going to swing in for 5. I'm going to drop to 6 here. Need to find something. There's a Hypnotic Specter. Probably going to keep my wall untapped. Have Oh, I'm going to attack actually. I am surprised. That means I'm going to play exactly a new wall. Another wall of swords here, but the problem is still on the table. And that's the Juggernaut. 5-3 cannot be blocked by walls. It's going to attack here. Going to put me on one. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to attack. Of course, Keith is going to attack. He has to attack, actually. It's one of the things that's, uh, that you need to do with Juggernaut. It has to attack each combat. So attacking now again. And um, can I find a Disenchant off the top or at least a Dust to Dust? I am attacking. I'm not conceding yet. So, oh, it looks like I'm, I'm holding the fort. I'm deciding not to attack. And okay, playing a Sylvan Library. And of course I shouldn't attack because my opponent has two factories as well. There's an attack and a disenchant. Okay. That is sweet. I'm still in this game. That is nice. I'm on one life. I mean, it's looking pretty bad. Remember, he's playing with Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt and Fireball. But hey, I've got a Sylvan. Maybe I can find something useful. Savannah is not very useful and passing turn here. Opponent finding a Badlands. So we're kind of stuck here. Of course, what my opponent can do is use the Neverneural's Disc, blow up the board states, and then kill me with... Yeah, look at that. That's exactly what it's going to do. And then kill me with the Mishra's Factory. So this is it. This is a pretty quick game one. I felt that the Juggernaut was pretty decisive. But now I can sideboard. And that's going to be interesting because I can board in... Artifact removal and some COP reds and black. So just let me get to my sideboard and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. And I can tell you that I boarded in some extra artifact removal and also my circle of protection artifacts, which I really like and I have never really played it. So I'm looking forward to being able to hopefully cast that. A single one is in my deck. I'm also hoping not to find an early Juggernaut in my way because you can see how incredibly difficult it is for me to deal with the Juggernaut when you have walls. Um, so yeah, let's hope we don't get to see too many of those or at least if I do, then I have some artifact removal. So here we go, drawing cards. And obviously because I play with white, I was able to board in two COP reds and two COP blacks. And they also work great with my Fajuran Enchantress. So let's see if I'm lucky. Who knows? Wild Grove over my Savannah passing turn here. And there is a Batlands. And okay, access to three mana. Will we see a Verjuren? Looks like we're not going to tap for two here. And another Wild Grove. Wow, finding a lot of Wild Groves. Okay, I'm, I am finding an Enchantress. This is an interesting decision. I'm not sure if this is the best decision. What I could have done here is just cast my Verjuren Enchantress. Keep the Wild Growth in hand and then next turn draw a card 
for the Wild Grove. So, yeah, I'm not really that happy with this play. There's a Hypnotic Spectre by Keith, by the way. He found a Dark Ritual into an Hypnotic Spectre. Hopefully, I can do something against this. Oh, yeah, I can. There's a Circle of Protection Black. Really lucky with this. I can prevent the damage that is being dealt by the Hypnotic Spectre. And playing a Lightning Bolt on the Fujurin Enchantress. So the Fujurin is going to die, unfortunately, for me. And let's see. And I think, actually, that last turn, did I play an extra land? Because how come I've got four lands? I don't think that makes sense. Anyway, I'll have to look it back, but I think I played a land too many. So sorry for that, Keith. Luckily, it doesn't influence the game too much because of all those wild growths. And there's an animate wall attacking here with the 4-5 animate wall. Uh, Carnivorous plant, I should say. And look at that. He's chump blocking with his Hypnotic Spectre, looking at the COP red, uh, black, I mean, and thinking, okay, this is not going to work. Tapping four here. Oh, there's a Juggernaut again. There is my enemy number one. I really have to find a solution. Oh, and I found it. There is a Spirit Link on the Juggernaut. And I'm also casting a Wall of Brambles. Passing turn here. Now, now remember, he has to attack with the Juggernaut. Now the way that Spirit Link works is you first get five damage and then you gain five life. So that means if you're on five and he attacks with the Juggernaut, I am dead because you first take the damage, then you get the life back. Ooh, another flip. Whoa, where's that Chaos Orb going? Not sure where the Chaos Orb was going. I assume the flip was our, on the Spirit Link, probably maybe on the COP Black. But, ooh, I'm really lucky. We saw that uh, flip in game number one that was perfect, but this flip, um, yeah, it went nowhere. So a lot of luck for me here. And there is a fortified area, so that means that my carnivorous plant is turning into a 5-5. Five five. That means I can start dealing some damage next turn, hopefully. There is a chain lightning on my life total going to 17. Taking damage, taking 5, gaining 5, so I'm still on 17. Untapping my army here, so my Carnivorous Plant can now hit for 5 because of the Fortified Area. Get plus 1, plus 0 oh, in Banding. And I'm tapping a Sword of the Ages. This is quite interesting. Remember, Sword of the Ages um, comes into play tap. When it untaps, I can tap and sack an X amount of creatures and deal damage equal to their power. So... That means if I can get my opponent low enough, I can use my sword. Here is an Underworld Dreams. And there's the attack by the Juggernaut. I'm staying at the same level. So I'm drawing a card, getting a damage from the Dreams. And I'm then going to activate probably my COP Black here to prevent that damage. And I'm just attacking. It looks like I'm really drawing the right pieces in this matchup. I'm finding that COP Black. I'm finding that Spirit Link. Ooh, there is a maze of if. That is actually a problem. Remember when I said in the introduction I haven't included... Oh, and there's a fireball on my life total going on 12. I haven't included any land removal in this deck, which is, yeah, not smart because, you know, we're playing Swedish and you really need some land removal. Um, but, yeah, we see maze of if here on the, on the plant. So that means I can't deal damage. And with the sword, I can sack both of my walls and then I can deal eight damage in total, but my opponent is on 10. Look at that. He's going on a direct damage train. I'm going to drop to nine after that chain. Remember, if he's got me on five, I'm dead because of that spirit link rule on the Juggernaut. I first take the damage, then I gain the life. So if he can find one more fireball, I'm actually dead. I mean, it feels really weird because I'm so close. To winning, all I need is one more wall and I can sack the sword and then I win. But I, it looks like I just keep drawing blanks here. Playing out another land, passing turn. This is pretty nerve-wracking. Is here, okay, there's a Wheel of Fortune. Discarding Balance, Wild Growth, and a Plains. I was probably keeping a Wild Growth in hand in case it would draw into a Fujurian Enchantress. 
drawing seven. And of course, I'm taking seven damage. Luckily for me, I've got a lot of mana and that's kind of what's keeping me alive here. So you can see me tapping all that mana. That's for each damage that I get from the Underworld Dream. So I'm taking no damage, staying on nine, which is quite important. And what is he going to do here? There's a Black Vice. That is a problem. That means I'm going to take damage. I've got seven in hand. Oh no, there's a lightning bolt. I'm still on, on six life. I think I can survive this. I'm tapping upkeep seven in hand, taking three damage. Going to go to three. I need a wall here. If I can find a wall, activate Sword of the Ages. Come on, let's do it. Come on, let's do it. Here we go. Bam. And that is so incredibly close. Oh, man. <laughs> but I'm really happy uh, to take this win. I must say uh, I was really lucky. I apologize, Keith, for that extra land drop I saw me doing there. Ah, I need to really watch my land drops. This is happening too often. Um, but luckily, it wasn't a big influence on the, on the match. Um, okay, so this is game number two. It's 1-1. One, one. So it's I guess it's kind of everybody's game, right? I'm being optimistic here. Um, let's go to game three. Who knows? Maybe I can find the right circle of protections and disenchants and whatnot and, uh, and win this matchup. Let's go to game three. Game number three. So uh, it's 1-1. One, one. My opponent, Keith, is on the play. And I'm hoping, like I said at the end of game two, if I can find the right COPs, if I can find ways to deal with the juggernaut, this could work. So we're just gonna, just gonna wait, maybe pray a little bit, trying to find the right cards. Let's get this game started. Okay, there is a Mishra's Factory from Keith, passing turn here. Let's see what I can find. Draw for turn, a forest, and pass turn. Looks like we're discussing a couple of things. No wild growth for me, by the way. I kept finding wild growths in my earlier matches, but no wild growth. Now taking two damage here, going to 18. It's a pretty easy attack from Keith, only a green, nothing to worry about. Okay, there's the wild growth. Oh, and there's the Sylvan Library. This is pretty ideal for me. Didn't see that Sylvan uh, too often in the previous two games, so happy to, to find it here. Also early in the game where I can still exchange Ooh, this is pretty painful. Strip mine on my planes with the wild growth. What I wanted to say where I can still exchange some card for, cards for life, but I'm already on 16 because of a double attack with the factory. And there is a new wild growth. But that was, that was pretty, uh, pretty tough. That strip mine on my wild growth land. Because if I would have had four lands, I could have played my walls. My plants, my wall of swords, and all that stuff. And now I still have to take damage from the Mishra's factory. And that's kind of a waste because I've got so many good walls that I can actually cast. Playing a wall of brambles here and passing turn. So keeping a green open to regenerate, which I think is a good decision. Remember, uh, you know, Keith is playing with lightning bolt, chain lightning. So that three toughness, you know, that's very vulnerable in this deck. Playing a Terror, oh, remember, you cannot regenerate with the Terror, so that's actually quite nice here from Keith, taking a damage, animating another two damage, already on 12, and I haven't really done that much. And what Keith is doing really well is just keeping the pressure up with that Strip Mine, with the Terror. Now there's a Wall of Swords, hopefully it can stick to the board. Another Mishra's Factory. This is getting problematic. He can now pump one of his factories to a 4-4. There is a Juggernaut. That is a problem. Again, the Juggernaut, which is not a surprise because Keith plays with four of those. I need to find an answer. Luckily, I've got a Sylvan. Let's hope I can find something. Game number three. I'm passing turn here. Maybe I've got a Disenchant. Hopefully, I'm going to cast in combat. Casting a Felwer Stone, attacking here, and okay, there's a Disenchant. That's good news. Pointing out to the Sylvan, saying I'm really happy with the Sylvan. The problem, of course, is there was so much early pressure from Keith that it's really difficult for me to draw an extra card. Remember, I'm playing against Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Fireball, 
So I'm not, I don't want to go under the 10 life. You know, I don't want to go under nine or on nine. I think that's very risky. Casting another wall of sorts, another juggernaut here by my opponent, Keith. And again, I need to look for an answer. Got to take damage here, dropping to eight. And oh, there is my circle of protection artifacts from the antiquities expansion. Now this is really cool. You can pay two to prevent damage from any artifact source. So that means I can start paying two and also playing an animate wall here over my wall of swords, deciding not to attack because of all those Mishra's factories that my opponent has. I'm really low already. Look at the life total of Keith. He's still on 17. There, he's gonna put me on five here. Gonna attack using my circle of protection artifacts to stay alive. But I mean, this is just not looking great for me. I need to find some more blockers. And even if I do, the problem here is, okay, there is a spirit link. Oh, I'm attacking here. I know why I want to gain life, deal some damage, but I think this is a mistake because my opponent Keith here can attack. He can animate uh, all his Mishra's factories, attack with three of them. I can only block one of them and then I'll drop to four. And I really cannot afford to block. And if I would have kept my Wall of Swords untapped with the Animate Wall, I could block with it and I could gain some life. Of course, then Keith wouldn't attack, but still. Animating them, he's going to attack. I actually think I'm lucky here that he's not attacking with all of them. Going to block one, prevent damage. Going to go down to six. Double bolt, done. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, you know when you, I, I was just too low, I had to kind of take a risk here. Um... Good, well done, well done, Keith. Congratulations on winning this matchup. And here, as we saw so many times on the channel, direct damage is huge. Um, Lightning Bolt, epic card in Magic the Gathering. Uh, and and, and it's, it's that for a reason, one red at three damage at instant speed to any target. Yeah, yeah, and yes, yes, I made a mistake attacking with the Wall of Swords there, but I think even if I wouldn't, you know, I was already too low to really get back into it. I needed some life gain. It's uh, It's been interesting, interesting matchup. So once again, thank you, Keith Morgan, for this uh, match. Uh, it was really interesting. It's also nice to see, you know, more and more players getting into old school magic. And it's nice to see that you're building on your deck. We had a little talk about your deck afterwards and what cards you could go for next. And obviously one of the th one of the things you told me that makes complete sense, you said, you know, I'm first gonna try to get two more City of Brasses. And I think that's really good. It's really good to kind of work on your mana base. And if you've got four Batlands and four City of Brass, um, you, you can definitely take this deck to the next level. So thank you for this match. And also thank you for watching another episode of Tibby Talks, the channel where we play old school magic and we talk about it even more and um if you want to support the channel like always you can leave a like you can leave a comment you can leave what else can you leave oh yeah you can share it on your socials <laughs> you can subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet and you can also support the channel financially uh you can become a patron actually like keith morgan is as well you can become a patron of the show of timmy talks and it already starts at a single dollar um so yeah if you're interested there's an info card popping up right now you can click on there you can visit and you can see how you can support the show also you can then join our discord if you want we can play some matches um, all that is all possible when you become a patron for now thank you very much for watching timmy talks and let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at our fantastic amazing wonderful patrons and channel members of timmy talks what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Her light of morning. Way, hey, up she rises. Way, hey, up she rises. Way, hey, up she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober.
Kikitus, think it is somber, Kazi. 